So to, this morning I want to preach about uh, just honoring our veterans, this message. And, and, and again, uh, for those of you who, who will, we have a, a hearing assisted for those who need it today. Laura is helping me back there. She's going to do her best to stay with me. And she's going to do her best to keep up with me as I talk. But uh, this morning, I want to make sure that everybody, if you need a listening device, I think we've got them all out today, but we have some extras. And uh, if you need one, we can get you one. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. One of my favorite scriptures that's found about the, the actual witness of the veterans in our faith. And it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and it set down at the right hand of, of the throne of God. If you would, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads this morning as we enter this time. And I'm going to ask you to pray a special anointing upon me. And I'll pray an anointing upon you that God would minister to both of us this morning. Heavenly Father, I pray in God as I ask you today, Heavenly Father, I pray that you would anoint these lips of clay, that I would speak the words that you want spoken. And I would, I would pray, God, today that you would open each heart, that they would not just hear with their ears, but they would listen with their hearts to receive from you. I pray, O oh God, that you would touch, and, and Lord, that you would touch us to see the effectiveness of our role in your kingdom work. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would touch, and let us, let us lift you up and glorify you in the things that you accomplish and the things that you do in us in this service today. And we'll give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'll stay with me now, and, and I'm going to just kind of go through this, and then I'm going to have the... Uh, uh, first of all, I want to share with you the definition of what is a veteran. Very simply this. What is a veteran? Go ahead and click out one more time. It says, one who has served. Now, we have the different branches of the armed forces that we have in, in the United States. And here in, in America, we have these different branches that are serving not only in this country, but they're serving around the globe. And we have some of our own that have served in different places. We have uh, different men and women. We have a young man right now that's serving in, in Alabama. We have a couple men that are, that are serving that have been at our church. And, and uh, there it's at Luke Air Force Base right now. And we have some others that, are, that have been serving. And we thank the Lord for each one. And I'm going to ask, if I could, to have all those that have served in the military... And you have served in whatever branch, be it the, the Air Force, the, the Navy, the, uh, the whatever branch, Marines, Army, whatever branch that you have served in. I want you to come up here and stand with me for just a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Not getting any easier. Thank you. Thank you, Hyman. Come on up here. Come up here. Just one more step. Oh, one more step. Okay. There Can you go. get up here? Don, you want me to help you climb up here? You'll pull me down, I think, won't you? Get up here. I want you to give these men a great big hand clap of appreciation. Come on over here, Jaime. Stand over there by them. Today we honor and celebrate the veterans who have served our country in our military, in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. It is because of your service that we have the freedoms in this country. We as people of, of a grateful nation say thank you. For your sacrifice, your service that you have given to protect and preserve our way of life and the freedoms that we hold so dear in this country. I want to ask you three, what branch of the service you served in? Marine Corps. You were in the Marines. Marine Corps. Marine Corps. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> wow. Air Force. Air Force. Air Force. Air Force. Air Force. Yes. Amen. What's that? Dave Wilson. Yes. Dave, Dave LaRosa is not here this morning. He's with his grandkids, but he was uh, serving in the Navy, and he served in the Navy also. And I want to say this morning that truly the freedom that we have today is, is not guaranteed. There are many things and many people who would like to take that freedom that we have away from us. One of the greatest benefits to this country is the freedom that God has blessed us with. And it's because of men and women that have served in the military that have given us that freedom. 
And if you don't realize these men and women that have put their lives on the line for us, you may never get a chance to say thank you to a veteran or one who has served. Maybe today you are sitting here and you think this just happened in this nation that we are free from. But there have been men and women that have laid their lives down, and I guarantee you every one of these men know those men and women who have put their lives on the line, and many of them know family and friends that have lost their life as they served. Some veterans were, have volunteered. Some of, of, of our uh, men and women have been drafted. Uh, which of you were, were volunteered? I volunteer. All three of these men volunteered. That's worth a hand clap right there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To volunteer, to put their life on the line, knowing the battle that they were going into, and some of you signed up because of that. I want to say a special thank you to, to each one of them and the branches that they served in, that they gave us the freedom that we have today. Now, here are a few things that I have noticed about most of the veterans that I have met. Go ahead, Johnny, and pull it. Here's Johnny. There it is. Go ahead and pull that first one up. They have a sense of patriotism to the nation they serve. Secondly, they have matured in life and responsibilities. They have more respectful, uh, they are more respectful of others and their rights. And fourthly, they are more responsible to follow orders and commit a task. And I want to say that serving in the military has opened doors for all of you. It's given you a direction in your life many times and taught you a lot of responsibility. And I think that some of the things that we can learn out of this is, is that for young men to grow up into being adults, they need something like this. They need the training and the responsibility that goes with it. And again, I thank you so much. I want to give you them one more hand clap, if you will, and tell them how much you appreciate them this year. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I... I was thinking that guys if you Jaime do you need me to help you down yeah, I, think so. no? I think I could make it <laughs> there you thank you each of them served in different capacities in their, in their branches as they served and I thank them again so much Veterans Day comes around once a year but we should honor our veterans in, in everyday life every time we take of the freedoms that we have to say thank you for each of them we have veterans that have served in other areas, such as the police department, the fire department. These are volunteers who put their life on the line. Yes, they are paid employees, but they take for, we are oftentimes taken for granted the idea of their service that they provide. It's not because of the money that they take this role, but so that they can help in families and those who are in need. They take these services and they provide, help us to provide for the protection and safety of each of us. One other place that we oftentimes overlook is that we have veterans of the faith, those who have served and those who have been faithful in their branches of, of service in the church that have stood the test of time, that have led multitudes of others instructing and guiding and directing. The veterans of the faith uh, seem to be sometimes the ones that we often overlook because they don't seem to be a quite as significant. The Bible tells us that there is a hall of faith if you will, of those who were first members of this. And, and uh, you, even though we have several in our church, we want to look at this. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. Hebrews eleven seven says, By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of the things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark uh, for the saving of his household. Hebrews 11 and 8 says, By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as his inheritance. Go ahead and pull the next one up. By faith, Hebrews 11 and 11, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, 90 years old. Anybody? Don't ever say you're too old for God's work. Amen? Uh, Hebrews eleven seventeen. by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up his son Isaac. Hebrews eleven twenty 20 says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Hebrews eleven twenty one 21 says, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of his, the sons of Joseph. Hebrews eleven twenty two 22 says, by faith, Joseph, 
when he was, was dying, uh, made mention of his departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. Hebrews 11.23 says, By faith, uh, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents. Hebrews 11.24 says, By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Hebrews 11.27 says, By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. Hebrews 11.28 says, By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Hebrews 11.29 says, By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by a dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after they were encircled for seven days. Hebrews 11.31 says, By faith the heart of Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. When we see that, those articles of faith and we see all those names that, have, that, that I read and, and all of them, there was one common denominator in every sentence that I read. And that is they walked by faith and not by sight. And the veterans that we have in this hall of faith that we see is also given to us as believers today who walk by faith. We have those who have walked through storms and they've walked through a, a, a treasury. They've walked through natural disasters and they've been through unbelievable circumstances. But we must understand that be, to be a veteran of the faith, we must be one who walks by faith. Amen. And we are not, there is no draftees, if you will, in God's army. There is no draftees. God didn't draft you to be his, his uh, veteran of faith. He, you were called. You volunteered. You said willingly, I surrender all that I might go. Amen? Amen. When these men that were up on this stage with me, when they were standing there and they were uh, volunteering and they, they, were, they committed their life, they realized that I can't take anything with me. Amen? You didn't pack your suitcase, your favorite toys. You didn't pack your, your favorite things to take with you. You went on the, the idea that they were going to give you a uniform and a little bit of a paycheck. And you went faithfully because you wanted to serve. And when we commit our lives to Jesus Christ, we're not doing it just for the fringe benefits of walking with Him. It's to commit our lives so we can serve. Amen? Come, that's a weak amen. Amen. When we commit our life to Christ, we commit it so we can serve Amen. with whatever capability, whatever talent, whatever uh, abilities that I have. Both men and women serve in this hall of faith. And that's why I wanted to read all of those because every one of them, uh, we've got to include everyone. We're all part of God's army. We're all volunteers stepping in by faith to say, Lord, where I can be used, I will be used. What I can do, I will do it for your kingdom. I will do it for your glory. There's only one way to enlist, and that is to surrender. And that's to surrender the lordship of your life. You see, what we've got to do is ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us of our sins. And the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive. You say, Pastor, I'm a morally good person. Doesn't matter. We've all sinned because we have an earthly father. And the, the generational curse that's passed on every human being that's been born with an earthly father is born into sin. And the only way to redeem the sin that we were born into is say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. Amen. And when we do that, we are enlisted in God's army. We are engrafted into that nature. I don't know about you, but I am thrilled to know that I have had people that have stepped into my life and have served and, and have been able to take the, this little uh, short ball-headed preacher and they have spoke into my life and they have created in me who I am today. I have had Sunday school teachers that I literally drove crazy. I was full of questions, James. I, had, I, was, I was almost like Xander. I had energy beyond energy, and I was thinking all the time. And I, I, I remember one time that I got in trouble when I got home from church by my dad because my Sunday school teacher, who was my pastor's wife, we had a home church that we were in, and the bedrooms were upstairs, and my Sunday school class was in the upstairs bedroom. And we were sitting there, and the whole time that she was trying to teach the lesson, I was bouncing on the bed. She told me, she said, you can't bounce on the bed. It squeaks, it's making noise, you have to get off the bed. 
I can remember Sister Wilson being so patient with me, but finally, after she had told me about three or four times, she finally said, Greg, would you please sit in the floor? I said, yes, ma'am. I said, but it's just so fun to bounce. And she said, sit in the floor. I got the wiggles and still sit there. And I can tell you that when she was done with me, she went and my dad said, well, how did Sunday school go? And she said, if he would have been able to sit still and not bounce on the bed, my dad said, son, I'm going to tell you how I can show you how to be still. And, and, and he said, you sit down in this chair and if you wiggle, you're going to get a whipping. I got about three whippings that day. I can tell you that when I look at this idea of, of the, the patience that it took, I can remember driving my mom and dad crazy. I can remember the faith that my grandmother spoke into me when I started ministry. She gave me advice on so many areas of my life. She told me that, that it, when I was beginning to pastor and I, I told her I was going into the ministry, she said, is there anything else that brings you joy in your life except this? She said, if there is, do it. But if this is what you feel called to do, then do it with all of your heart and don't back away from it. Put your whole heart into it. She was the one who told me how to, to, to find the woman that I love and how to... She said, there are three things you need to know. And she said, the most important one is you need to see her happy, as happy as she can possibly be. And of course, being around me, I saw Donna happy all the time when we were dating. That just happens, you know, whenever I... Uh, the second thing is, is, she said, you need to find out what things she likes. And then you need to see her, and she said, the third thing you need to do is see her when she is the maddest that she could possibly be. Well, I'm good at that too, but I, I had never seen her get mad the whole time that we had been dating. And so I, I, I said, well, if my grandmother has given me all this wisdom all of her life, I will try this. So I decided that I told, I called Donna and I said, hey, we're going to go and we're going to go out to eat and I want you to dress really nice because we're going to go to a fancy restaurant in Chattanooga. And it's about 20 minutes from my school. So I, I said, I'll be to pick you up. I want you to dress really nice. And she had her ni a nice outfit on. She come downstairs and, and she was looking so pretty. It had rained all that afternoon. And, and, and Chuck... I decided that I was going to, at, at that point, I, I said, let me, let me, so you don't get your outfit all wet and dirty, let me pick you up. And I carried her from the, the walkway there, and I was being such a gentleman that I carried her. But in order to see her the maddest that I could ever see her, I set her down on the hood of my wet Nova. And she was in this nice outfit and got all wet. And believe it or not, I saw her get mad. <laughs> and I've seen her mad many times since, but... She loved me in spite of that, and she's loved me ever since. And sometimes you got to realize the necessity. But I thank the Lord for those who have spoken to my life. And each of you can sit right here today, and you know of people that have spoken to your life. There have been loved ones and family members. Maybe it was me as your pastor, or maybe it was a friend, or, or someone who directed you or guided you or gave you something to hold on to, to lead you in the paths of your life when you struggled and when you didn't know where to turn. There have been people in your life that have been a part of your life that spoke into you to bring you where you are today. Those are the halls, those are the veterans of the faith that we speak of today. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Continuing on down in verse 32, and it says, And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell you of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, also of David and Samuel, the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fiery of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant, uh, in, va valiant in battle, excuse me, and turned to fight the armies of the aliens. Women who received their dead, ra uh, received their dead raised to life, and others who were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mocking and scourging, yes, of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned and they were uh, sawed in two. They were tempted and were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in the desert, and mountains, and dens, and caves of the earth. All these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, 
did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. He goes on and he talks about the idea of these men and women that have served in the capacity that they have served in, the direction that they have, have blessed in. But verse 12 of my text reads very simply this, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. I want you just to, just to stop. I can think of the men and women that, that have served in my family and the military. I can think I can stand here and tell you these men that have served. I, I never will forget. I had a, a friend of mine that was in Payson that had served in, and uh, he was in the, um, the, the uh, World War II. He had served in some other capacities. He was a very older, much older gentleman. But when he, when he would speak to me about the circumstances of his service and the things that he had to go through, he would speak to them. And he would, I, would, I asked him one time, I said, all that you went through, would you say it was worth it? And he said, I wouldn't change a thing. When I think about the nature of, of the veterans that have served in the, in the Christian faith and the way that they had served, and I bet when we get to heaven, we'll see a hall of faith of people, all of these that we've read about in the Scripture and, and those that have gone before us, those who have served in us. Maybe it's your grandparents, and maybe I'll get to see my grandmother, and, and I'll get to see my, 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 my folks. I'll get to see all of my family that has gone on before me. I'll see those that are there that are cheering me on right now. They're saying, stay faithful to it. I look back how they've impacted my life, how they spoke into my life, how they, they were patient with me when I didn't behave and when I needed to behave, how they helped me along the way and, and directed my life. And I, I tell you this today, you need to think about this. Somebody took time to speak into your life. Somebody took time to lead you in this relationship with Christ. And that one that led you in your relationship with Christ, maybe they're here today. Maybe you need to, to take time to thank them. But, but the other thing is, is right now you need to take time to realize the importance of this. And you need to realize the significance of their life in your life. Listen. If these men wouldn't have volunteered, sure, somebody else might have filled the gap. But I thank the Lord because there were those who stood up and said, I will go. I will serve. And you're, they're, they're, we are here in this country celebrating our freedoms and celebrating. I, I, I can't stand it when they talk about all the things that this country is and, and that talk it negative. About it. I know it's not perfect. But I thank God for it and I praise the Lord for men and women who have put their lives on the line so that this country can be the country that it is. And we need to thank God for that. And I know that, with there, I know that we have a lot of issues that we speak of and a lot of negative things. But the Bible says that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily ensnare us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of the, of the throne of God. I want to quickly go through a couple things about these being the veterans of faith and how that we should be the veterans of the faith for those who are following us. Our veterans of the faith may be those who led us to the Lord, it may be those who told us how to live and the way we should live to teach us and train us. I love it when we have our men's breakfast and the men bring their sons by the example that they should be and see. I thank the Lord when we see the work days around the church property and young men will come to volunteer and help because they are seeking the opportunity to be the example. They are seeing someone serve before them and they want to be a part of it. I thank the Lord. Just last week, I thank the Lord for those who, who have volunteered to do the work around the church. When Lupe came, I, I saw her, uh, Anna and Alexandra with Lupe as she came to clean the church and she, she I had the camera on and they were opening the closet door and and they were waving at me and they were here and they were running the vacuum cleaner and helping Lupe and she said this is a lot of church to clean all by yourself and I thank the Lord they're learning something from their mom because she volunteered now you could say they were drafted 
but I saw a lot of smiles and a lot of joy when they were here. And I thank the Lord because, you know, you, uh, uh, Martin, you might have went kicking and screaming yesterday uh, at the men's breakfast to have to be here and come all, get up early in the morning when you could have slept in. But he was here and he, and he enjoyed eating about 10 pieces of Don's French toast. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know how many. He's, but I, I think about all of that. And I think, I, I think of the fact that if you take time to do it yourself, and then you become the example to encourage someone to come alongside of you, to come with you. That's, that's what it's all about, being, being a mentor, being a disciple uh, of Christ is discipling someone else to follow Christ. It's not just the, the fact that we try to work our way to get to heaven ourselves. It's about who can we lead and guide in that direction with us. Now, the problem with it is, is we can't save anyone, but we can lead them to the place to where they will surrender their heart and life to Christ. I love it when, when I see uh, the examples of others um, sh that, 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 that we see that. Go ahead and pull that last one up, Johnny, if you will. Cheer us on when we are weary. Those who paved the way for us in this Christian way. That became that example to guide us and direct us. These were the veterans of the faith that became a part of our life that showed us. Yes, we, we have those who were my parents when I was younger. And I heard this said a few years ago at General Assembly by one of our general overseers. He said, I had a drug problem when I was younger in my home. He said, I was drugged to church every time the doors were open. I had a, a, a drug problem. I'm going to tell you something. I love it when parents will say, my, I'm, my kids really didn't want to come, but I made them come anyways. Come on, Amen. amen. The problem with it is, is that if you can't get the parents to come, chances are the kids won't. I, ho I hope you're getting what I'm saying here. Because we lead by example. Someone led you by example. Someone took the time to pave into your life, to speak into you, so that you would see the way and understand the Christian faith. Becoming a Christian veteran is simply this. To have faith and being able to focus on what it says in, chap in chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. It says that we, we get rid of everything that hinders us or entangles us. And you, if you're going to be an example and lead someone in the way that they should go. The Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. You know that, that, that training up process is one that it's also in the, the New Testament. It is called a disciple. Elijah had Elisha. We all have someone that we can mentor and speak into the lives by showing them. The chances of us being uh, uh, able to see that example sometimes is hard. I, I, that's why I, I love the, the church because I had all kinds of folks that I could look to as examples. Come on, we got a, we got a church full of people here. Amen. Amen? If you need an example for how to, to be married for a long time, Brother Farr, how long you been married? 62 and a half years. Amen? Amen. If young couples, if you're dating, you need to talk to him. Maybe you need to talk to her first. <laughs> then she'll tell you how to do that. How long you uh, guys have been married? Forever. Forever. <laughs> For me, it was 59 years. For her, it's forever. 59 years for Brother Bledsoe, Sister Bledsoe says it seems like forever. <laughs> Almost the same thing. What I'm going to tell you is this. Sometimes we don't even realize the example that we see. And when we set examples of ungodly practices and principles in our lifestyle, what that is is passed on to the next generation. And, and it's not only passed on to the next generation, but because it's passed on, it's amplified. Amen. You want me to tell you why divorce is so rampant right now in the world? It's because we went through a generation where they begin to start signing for uh, in, anything and everything. If you couldn't get, let me tell you something. If you've been married for 62 years, 62 and a half, you've never had a disagreement in all of your life, right? It's <laughs> always been flowers and roses at your house, for the most part. He says, for the most part, she says, oh, I don't know about that. But anyways... And I'm, I'll counsel you guys later. <laughs> but uh, but uh, sometimes, sometimes when, we, when we come to a place to where we, we look at what we are passing on, are we living a righteous life? 
Are we living in a path where we're tiptoeing around sin ourselves, and we wonder why our kids are falling in the same place? If we are not careful of the way that we, we lead and we guide, if we're, if, we, if we're dragging around the weight of sin, what do you expect our children to pick up from us in our lifestyle? What do you expect our children to do? They, they don't see the sacredness in marriage. They don't see the sacredness in the way that they live holy lives. They don't see the, the value of the principles of how to live and to be, to be faithful to God and to commit to God. Amen? They don't see that. And we've got to be, if we want to see our children committed to that, then we've got to be committed to it. Amen. When it comes down to it, we can't let ourselves be entangled with the sins because it not only would destroy us, but it destroys the path of the future. Go ahead and pull the next one up. Secondly, we must, one, run with perseverance. It, we didn't start this thing to finish it tomorrow. We've got to run and we've got to finish as strongly as we started. We've got to continue down that path of faithfulness and perseverance. We didn't begin it to quit it. Amen? Amen. Now there's nothing wrong with looking to the finish. There's nothing wrong to know that the older we get, the, the closer we are to heaven. Amen? Yep. I don't want to stay a day longer than I need to. And when God calls my name, I want to go home. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be faithful while I'm here because I'm, I'm going to finish this race that's set before me. I'm going to trudge on and, and I don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how fast I am right now. Come on. I'm not near as quick as I used to be. I, Manny, you remember the other day, when, what was that, 10 years ago when we played football? I think it was at least 10, wasn't it? We played on, on a, a Thanksgiving day. Thanksgiving Day, wow, 10 years ago. And Manny was amazed at how fast I was. I remember when my son Joey watched me play foot, or softball one time, and he said, man, Dad, you can really run around them bases. You know what my grandson said the other day? Papa, I can barely see you get up and get out of the chair. I've slowed down. But our goal is not to quit, but persevere. In our Christian faith, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, we didn't start this thing to quit halfway through it. I'm pressing towards the mark of the calling of Jesus Christ. My goal is not to finish here, but my goal is in heaven. Amen. If this is all there was, then this wouldn't be worth it. But I'm going to tell you something. One day we'll look back on what we've done and what we've been through and what we've pressed on through, and we can look back and say it was worth it all because the gloriousness of heaven and the glamour that's all there, we will look back and say it was worth it. That's what we press for. The perseverance to press on and run on through those things. Go ahead. Fix your eyes on Jesus. If you're going to stay focused on anything, stay focused on Jesus Christ. Look to Him, the author and finisher of your faith. There's no greater example to look to than Jesus Christ. There's no greater example to see. And if you can live your life patterned after anyone, I know that some people say, well, none, nobody in my family is saved. They're all a bunch of heathens. You probably could be there today. They didn't know what it was to serve God. I'm the only one. Then you need to look at the author and finisher of your faith. You need to look to Jesus Christ. He's the example you need to follow. He's the one you need to look to. He's the example that's flawless. Amen. He's without sin. You're going to look at some of these humans around us, and they may be morally good, but we've all got faults. Come on. We've all got things and maybe we hide them well and maybe we, we hide them behind our, 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 our fathoms. But I can tell you something. Sometimes we all struggle because we're still in the flesh. And even the most faithful of Christians struggles today in battles. Battles of discouragement and disappointment. But God is faithful. And when we look and we, we focus on anything. They were saying the other day, they were talking to a marathon runner and they said, what is your best approach to a race. He said, I never look beyond what is right in front of me, but I stay focused on the next target to finish the race. The closest thing that I, that I ever came was when we ran that, we did, well, we walked a 5K. Remember that? 
And, and we did. And Dave still says I cheated, but I just found a, a, an avenue of a shortcut. That's not really cheating. It's just I rounded the corner a little closer than others. No, David, God's going to get you for that. Man, we, we, but, but I stayed focused. I, I knew where the end was, but I stayed focused on what was right in front of me. I stayed focused on, on wh what was the next step. Where was I going next? Where was the next turn? What was the next path? And I would look down the road, and I wasn't looking to where the finish line was because it was behind me, and I, I knew that the direction, but I stayed focused. Let me tell you something. You need to look to Jesus in your race, in your work, in your walk with this, in this world. You need to stay focused on one thing, and that is Jesus Christ. That song we sang, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. Let me tell you something. You will never go wrong looking to Jesus to live like him. Amen. Amen. And if we can focus on that one pattern, we can see the example of what God wants us to be in this world today. Amen. You see, I don't want people to see me. I want them to see Jesus in me. I, 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 want, to, I want to be able to, to, when people look at me, they say, there's something good about that guy. He is who he says he was. He follows Jesus Christ. He is a, a Christian. He is faithful. I, 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 I want to I look at that. In a world full of, of confusion and chaos, I want them to see something in my life that I have committed to Christ that they can say, I can follow that. Because he's following Christ. That's why Paul said, imitate me as I follow. Follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. And he, and he led by that example. He said, I'm focused on Jesus Christ, so you're safe to follow me. Sometimes we, we've got to realize the importance of keeping our eyes upon Christ. The next thing we see in the fourth part of this is enduring opposition. Now listen, you can be serving the Lord for a lot of years, but you will face opposition. The Bible says, in this world you will have tribulation. You will have problems. You will have circumstances that are hard to press through. You will have moments in your life to when you wonder, God, where are you? There are times to when you wonder, God, did, did I, you know, what, what's going on in me? And when those oppositions come, you've got to realize that you can stand, if you keep your focus on Jesus Christ and know that He is with you and He can help you through it, you can get through any circumstance. We talked about it yesterday at the men's breakfast. If we can just realize that we're not doing this alone, that God is with us in every and any of our circumstances, we can see the end and finish. Amen. No matter what problem or, or circumstance. You know, I, I can tell you this. Do you know that no matter what you've been through in your past, your present circumstance is your most difficult? You know why? Because it's immediately in your way. It's immediately your circumstance that you face. You may have been through cancer and heart disease. You may have been through all those things, but you can have a hangnail, and that's your biggest problem because you got it today. Now, that sounds silly, but that's exactly what happens. And we, we, are, we can struggle through all the other battles that we've been through, and we fail to see the faithfulness of God or the focus on what God's done in our past. It's the immediacy to realize that He is present in our time of need. Amen. And no matter what the opposition is, you can be a veteran of the faith if you will simply say, God, if you are with me, I can do this. Amen. We, we tend to move beyond that. Sometimes we forget about God being faithful in our past. Next, don't grow weary and lose heart. This is one that touches base with me. I, for some of you that know, I sent a prayer request around not too long ago. Or Brother Bledsoe did, I sent it to him. A friend I went to school with. went through some problems and circumstances in their life. They are on to be with the Lord now, but in the latter part of their life, they turned back to God, but they had wandered away. They had been lured by the, the works of the enemy. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Right now, the presence of God is celebrating in heaven. I can tell you something. You are never beyond the nature of the ability of Satan to tempt you to lose how you start. You may have started out strong 
But when you run into that wall, and every runner that runs a race will tell you, if they're an endurance runner at all, they will tell you there is a wall that you have to press through. You have to push beyond that. You'll, there'll be pain. You have to press beyond that. You, when, when you come into those circumstances, you don't, listen, I'm not speaking from experience. The closest I come to running is around the block. But when I push beyond that, when I see and I've spoken to those, I'm, I, listen, I've had enough Christian friends that have persevered through circumstances that I would have given up in. Broken homes. Broken relationships. An abusive father. I, I, I go on down the list of all the things that, that have happened and, and, and sometimes it's easy for us to lose heart and, and, and we grow weary and, and we get tired. But if we're going to be veterans of the faith, it doesn't matter how long, it matters how we finish. Brother Far, I want to be as faithful to God today and in the future. If tomorrow I go to meet the Lord, then I want to be found as faithful as I was when I first met Him. Amen. I want to endure just like I, when I committed my life to Christ and I finally made that decision, Lord, I'm not giving up, I'm pressing on, I'm going to finish this thing, I am committed to it. At that point, when I made that commitment, I was not turning back. And, I, and I'll tell you this, I've made some mistakes, I've done some foolish things, I've slipped and fallen, I've done some things that, that God kind of smacked me on top of the head and said, hey! Get back in line. Get focused on the right thing. And in those times when I've gotten weary and discouraged and down, God sent people in my life to speak into me. When I, I, was as a, I had been a young pastor in Payson, and I'd started, and we were going through some growth problems, and, and the church was doing well, but we were, in a, we were getting ready to get into a building program, and we had this, and, and I, you know... I've had different situations come up in the community, and I, I remember the, the service after I preached, I was, Joe, I had crawled off the pulpit, literally, totally discouraged. I tried to preach and didn't preach very well, didn't feel really good, was going through a lot of stress, and my mind wasn't where it needed to be, and I come off that pulpit, and I, and I, I called the overseer on Monday morning, and I said, Brother Logan, I resign. I said, I, I cannot do this anymore. This has been years ago. I've done this several times since then, but I remember that one very pertinent. And I called him and I said, I, I resign. I can't do this anymore. And he said, okay, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> hung up the phone. And when he hung up the phone, I thought, well, he could have at least prayed for me or something. When he hung up the phone, I started thinking, now God, you called me to this. And, and, and I know that this is not going to be forever. And I know that, that things are going to change. I've seen good and I've seen you do good things. And I can remember when I, when I, got, I, I went to that place and I, I got home that, that Monday afternoon and, and I just I, I started praying. And then the, the next morning, Brother Logan called me. And he said, uh, listen, I've decided to, that I maybe should call you back. And he said, did you want me to help you pack? Or have you decided you're going to stick it out? And he said, I'm praying on it. He said, I'm, I, he said, I want you to pray about it. By Wednesday night, God had taken away the pain and the hurt. God had blessed me. We were blessed. And, and God brought some new folks around. And, and, and God, God started healing some pains and some hurts. And I can, I can tell you this, that, that if I had spoken that, that moment of time, I would not be what I am and where I am today. And sometimes you've got to realize that you cannot give up when you get weary and when you get tired. I remember when you called me and said, I can't do this anymore. I can't teach anymore. I'm too tired. And I said, yes, you can. Does it, did it stop hurting? No. But he said, I'm going to press through it. When you sit in a Sunday school class and five people show up, it's hard to do it. But you press through it. And when, when things go negative, you just press through it. Because giving up is not an option. And quitting cannot happen. Because God is faithful. I will be faithful. Amen. Amen.
If we would press through the circumstances and we would realize the, the, the probability of our success comes not in us, but in God, we could realize the victory is right beyond us. I want us to look at these last statements that I'm going to close with. If Dave and Faith had come, be ready. Being a veteran of the faith, we are called to mentor others because we were mentored. Because somebody took time to speak into your life. Because somebody took time to mentor you. Somebody took time to listen to you. Somebody took time to help you. Amen. Took time to instruct you and guide you. Speaking into your life because I can tell you that God has used me many a time to speak into young ministers' lives. And not everyone, when you speak into their life, automatically says, Hooray! How many of you realize that sometimes when you speak to someone, they'll look at you and say, who do you think you are speaking to me? Anybody got any teenagers? Amen. You've got adult children. You know what I'm talking about. And they'll look at you and they'll say, why do I need to listen to you? Because I've been there. I've done that. I've been through those circumstances. I've been through those situations. I've been down that path before. I've seen the, 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 the circumstances and what can happen. I told one of my kids this one time, I said, I'm not trying to stop you from being who you want to be. I'm just trying to keep you from falling in the same hole I fell in. Listen and learn from me. Amen. When somebody, get, when somebody puts up a yield sign... Or a caution sign. It's there for a reason. We are discipled to disciple others. It is not enough for us to plan on going to heaven and making our preparations to go. It is our goal and should always be our goal that we would take many others. If these men who served and they served in the military and they were veterans of, of the cause that they fought in and they served in, it would not be enough for them to stand up and say, I'm doing this just for me. But they stood up to say that I represent the entire nation. And when they stood up today, they were fighting the enemy and they were fighting on, on every side. But I can tell you this, that the circumstances they stood up for was a country that needs to understand and be grateful to it and we need to be grateful to those in the faith who have stood the test of time and been before us and served and thank God today that you are able to serve and let others follow you they need to see marriages that work come on amen, amen. they need to see the circumstances when we can press through I used to love it Sunday nights, every Sunday night when I was growing up as a kid, we'd have testimony night. Every Sunday night was testimonies. Sometimes they had enough testimonies that the pastor wouldn't even preach. If y'all would show up and testify, you say, well, I don't have nothing to say. What you're going through right now Maybe very circumstances that somebody's going through. The brokenness, the hurt, the pain, the sickness, situations. Oh, it's not that big a deal? Oh, yeah, it is. It's a big deal. Because somebody stood and said, I made it through. And because I did, I know you can too. Amen. I don't know how it's going to work for you. Our paths may be, have gone different places and different routes. But same God who saw me through will see you through. God is faithful. We are not called to make our own way to heaven. But we are called to sow as much seed as we can. To take as many with us. Come on, amen. We are discipled to disciple others. We are called, we were mentored to mentor others. We were called so that we could sow into other lives. The circumstances that you have made it through... God will use you to touch many others by the hand. Some of you have powerful testimonies of what God has done in your life. And you've never shared it with anyone. You've never shared it with anyone. God is faithful and God is good. God is good. 
Some of the men, when we do our men's breakfast, Don's asked some of the men in our church, they've shared their testimonies. I'm sitting back and, whoa. I never knew that about them, of what they went through and what the circumstances are. But they stood the test of time. God is faithful. God is good. If you can live it before Him, they will see Christ in you.